Reboots. They're everywhere. Some are great. Others... In 2013, the Tomb Raider series got a reboot of its own, changing Lara Croft from a gun-toting, back-flipping badass to a younger, less experienced take on the character. But in doing so, it fundamentally changed the core of who Lara Croft was. Was it a change for the better? Or did they throw the baby out with the bathwater? Let's find out. Created in the mid-90s, the original Lara Croft was a product of her time. Tough and resourceful, she was an athletic explorer with a passion for lost artifacts, a sassy dry wit, and two big... guns. With the rise of 3D graphics and the Sony PlayStation's marketing team telling everyone that video games weren't just for kids anymore, Lara was a natural poster child for the cool new era of polygons. Wow, look at those polygons! To some, she was a kick-ass sex symbol. To others, she was an icon of female empowerment. But if you're anything like me, she was a vindictive murderer of old butlers. <laughs> Lara Croft was originally supposed to be a male explorer with a hat and a whip. Until she was redesigned into something a little less, you know, derivative. The early games of her blasting dinosaurs and vaulting around massive caves were a huge success. But over time, her popularity waned and with some aspects of her design feeling a little outdated, it's not surprising she was given an overhaul for 2013's Tomb Raider. But it wasn't just her looks that changed. This was the age of gritty reboots, after all, so 2013's Tomb Raider had a much darker, more serious tone. Instead of a seasoned adventurer, Lara was now an inexperienced young student who'd accidentally gotten stranded on an island with mysterious deadly forces. Our young protagonist was forced to grow up and grow up fast. If she wanted to escape, she'd have to learn to become the Tomb Raider we know and love. It's a cool premise, and on the face of it, you can see why this would be a compelling new direction to take the character. But, as with most things, the devil is in the details. So, how do you take an inexperienced young woman and turn her into the Tomb Raider? Oh dear lord! You punish her, apparently. Like, quite, quite a lot of punishment, actually. In just the game's opening 30 minutes, Lara Croft is shipwrecked, impaled on a spike, and assaulted by one of the marauders patrolling the island. From there, she's forced to murder a metric fuckton of angry henchmen, clamber through an island that seems determined to kill her, and endure a series of other wince-inducing obstacles along the way. This takes your typical growth arc and turns it into something more like The more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. But the central premise of punishing her over and over is supremely effective at getting the audience to care about Lara. Each time she does accomplish something, it feels more meaningful precisely because we've seen her fail so many times before. On the surface, this is great. By exposing a protagonist's weaknesses, you make them more relatable. Because every human can relate to being an imperfect, suffering mess. But that doesn't mean that all suffering is equal. You see, you have to be careful about which flaws you choose to show and the way in which you show them, because that can impact how the audience perceives the character. For example, take a look at these two scenes. First, here's Lara getting punished in the reboot. Then here's old Lara dealing with a problem of her own. Notice the contrast in how Lara deals with these obstacles. Old Lara is smart, stoic, agile, and resourceful. If a problem presents itself, she weighs her options and proceeds accordingly, relying on her skills to see her through. In the reboot, new Lara scrambles to deal with the situation. She seems like someone hopelessly out of her depth, barely hanging on by a thread. It's not simply a lack of experience separating these two. Whereas old Lara is characterised by her extreme competence and her ability to adapt to whatever is thrown at her, new Lara lacks any of that drive, regularly failing at whatever she's trying to achieve. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with having a character fail a lot. To prove that, you don't have to look much further than Lara's original inspiration of Indiana Jones. A core part of Indy's character is that he's a perpetual failure. He's always getting knocked down or double-crossed. He's not highly competent. But, like Lara, he is highly motivated, always risking his life on the next harebrained scheme. It's one of the things that makes him so likeable, because as an audience, we see him struggling to achieve his goal and we root for him to succeed. But are we meant to sympathise with Lara Croft in the same way that we sympathise with Indiana Jones? I would argue that we're not, because the original Lara Croft is more of an aspirational figure than a sympathetic one. And for an example of what I mean by that, Take another character who, like Lara, is both highly competent and highly motivated. The name's Bond. James Bond. James Bond doesn't lose. He's resourceful, he's smart, and he's highly capable. The audience isn't meant to feel sorry for him, but instead admire him as they see how he overcomes the impossible obstacles in his way. Now, is there anything fundamentally wrong about changing Lara Croft from a James Bond type of character into more of an Indiana Jones type of character? Not exactly. I mean, this is a reboot after all. You are allowed to take some liberties. But if you're going to make sweeping changes like that, the most important question to ask first is why? What are you trying to achieve? Because if you stray too far from what defined that character in the first place, you might as well just create someone brand new. If the goal for this story was to have Lara become the old character that we remember by the end, well... She gets those guns, and she's certainly a lot more proficient at blasting dudes to death, which is, I guess, a very video gamey way of demonstrating character growth. But in terms of her learning to embody those traits of proficiency that the old Lara had, well, we don't see much of that. You have to start by examining what the core of that character is. If you were to describe the old Lara in a few bullet points, it would be something like intelligent, athletic, resourceful, witty, and a huge history nerd. Then you have to ask yourself, how are you going to play on those traits while staying true to the core of what that character is? If the goal is to show a younger, less experienced version of Lara, then I think the most obvious solution is to amp up some of those traits to focus on her immaturity. Make her so obsessed with artifacts that it's a detriment to herself and to those around her. Make her so confident in her own wits and resourcefulness that she's the one getting herself into trouble. Instead of having her flounder in a cruel environment, show her recklessly seeking out these challenges to prove her own ability. This is exactly the arc that James Bond had in the Casino Royale reboot. He starts off as a hyper-talented, hyper-focused thug, a bruiser assassin, callous and willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goal, no matter what gets in his way. His arc in the story is to open himself up to others and to rely on the people around him. He realises he can't beat the villain all by himself, and that sometimes it's better to lose than to put the people he cares about at risk. This worked in another similar reboot as well. Captain Kirk in 2009's Star Trek is another highly competent, highly motivated character. When Kirk gets into trouble, it's his fault because he's too cocky or too argumentative. Similarly, his arc in that film is to learn to trust others, cooperate, and mature into the kind of leader that others want to follow. I'm not saying either of those films are perfect, by the way, but what they do achieve is an updated take on the characters that feels faithful to the originals. Whilst there's a lot to like about 2013's fuck around and find out version of Lara, I can't help but feel like she would have been more interesting as someone brand new, free of any comparisons to that Tomb Raiding Queen of the 90s. <laughs> But hey, I hear Miss Croft is getting another reboot soon, so let's see if the next one finds a way to update her without going too far in the opposite direction. That's all for now. If you made it this far, consider subscribing, because it really helps me out. I need the validation of numbers going up on a website. There's something wrong with me, I know. But whether you subscribe or not, hopefully I'll see you next time, and until then, keep writing. Mm -hmm.